So I've been reporting on Pakistan's um, amazing natural heritage, I think, for uh, more than 20 years. I don't want to give away my age, uh, but it seems like it's been forever. What's my idea? What do I want to share with you today? And um, this is something I learned at uh, WWF Pakistan. So this is the Worldwide Fund for Nature. And um, it's right there on the screen in behind me. So uh, how many of you sitting in this room, we all know that Pakistan is an amazingly beautiful country, right? But how many of you are aware that from zero meters to 8,611 meters, which is the tip of K2, about a distance of about 1,000 miles, Pakistan has the greatest changes in elevation within any country on Earth. So all these very dramatic changes in altitude means very diverse ecosystems, which are home to a wide variety of wildlife species. And here's one of my favorite, and this is a snow leopard. Um, and this has uh, uh, been caught on a camera trap. It's a very elusive creature, very difficult to spot in the wild. Um, and here it is, I think it's up in the mountains of Chitral or Gilgit Baltistan. Uh, a secret camera was installed there. And there's only about a few hundred of them uh, that still survive today in Pakistan. Um, they are, of course, more than 5,400 in the wild in other countries. And they live up in the high mountains of the Karakoram Hindu Kush mount mountain range. So here we have on the coast, uh, and this little spot that you see behind me is actually a green turtle, and it's making its way to the Arabian Sea. And, uh, you know, it's amazing to see them hatch because they come out of their eggshell, and they actually have, it's like a built-in radar, they know exactly where to go, and they head straight towards the water. And very few of them actually make it to the water because there are seagulls circling and there are stray dogs on the beach and they're often picked up and eaten. So I'm happy to say that this one made it to the water because I actually picked it up and <laughs> took it and <laughs> put it in the water because I wasn't going to take any chances. And this is a beautiful beach uh, near the border of Iran. It's called uh, Daran Beach. It's in Jivani. So uh, what really inspired me? What was my eureka moment? Why did I start, uh, decided to come out of my safety zone of uh, Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad, occasionally Peshawar maybe, uh, maybe Mari sometimes, uh, Nathya Gali, and what made me go out and really travel across Pakistan? Well, it started uh, with a story on uh, the Indus Dolphin. And here I am sitting on a boat um, near the Sakhar Barrage on the Indus River. And I'm thinking, uh, what am I doing here? <laughs> no, actually, I was totally mesmerized. The sun was setting. It was all red and gold. And it was as if the river was on fire. And um, that's when I heard them before I saw them. And they were an amazing sight to behold. And um, so they're mammals, and they come out. To, for air, and they jump into the, into, uh, outside the water in a graceful arc, and that's when I first saw them. And yes, they are blind because of thousands of years of evolution of living in the muddy waters of the Indus. They no longer need their eyes, so they navigate through a very sophisticated sonar system inbuilt. So when I first went to the river, uh, I was told that there are only 600 of them left, and this was way back in the 1990s. And I'm happy to report that today there's more than 1,800 of them. This was the latest survey. Um, and uh, this was done by WWF Pakistan. And I attribute uh, the increase in the numbers to this simple uh, project called the Indus Dolphin Rescue Unit. And this was set up by the Sin Wildlife Department with technical support of WWF Pakistan. So what happens is in the winters, the dolphins swim into the various canals and um, barrages, and, and then the water level drops, and they're stranded in these pools of water. And they often drown, or they're caught by the fishermen in their nets. But now people have become so aware that they actually call the Sin Wildlife Department and say that, you know, we spotted an Indus dolphin in a small pool near our village. Can you do something about it? So they send an ambulance. And the ambulance comes with a stretcher, and they actually go into the pool, gently pick up the dolphin, 
take it into the ambulance and then transport it to the main river and then they gently let it swim away. And in this way they have saved the lives of many of these dolphins. And they're as old as the river itself. So of course when I started my travels there were many other endangered species and this is the Suleiman Markhor. And the markhor, as you know, is the national animal of Pakistan. And they, we have five subspecies of markhors in Pakistan. And this is the straight horn variety. It's the most rare. Uh, its trophy sells for $60,000 today. And um, this, unfortunately, is a dead uh, Suleiman markhor. It's been hunted. Uh, and this is on the border with Afghanistan. It's called Torghar. It's called the Black Mountain. And what happens every year is that foreigners, um, big game hunters come and they pay $60,000 to the local community to hunt these animals. But this is a very successful trophy hunting uh, programs uh, introduced by the Torgar project. And they are actually helping to save this animal because all the proceeds are plowed back into the community and they're used for the local people's education, uh, for lining their, uh, their water channels, and so the money is put to good use, and because of that, the local people now have learned to value each animal. And the numbers have increased from just under 100 to about 1,000 now. And this is done by Sadar Nasi Tareen in Balochistan. So um, you learned really early on, I learned really on in my travels that all the good stuff is on the mountains. So if you want to see the Suleiman Markhor in the wild, you have to climb the mountain. If you want to see Chilgozas, you have to climb the mountain. So here I am, I'm on top of a mountain, and I'm miserable because I uh, don't know how I'm gonna get back down. This was a very difficult mountain to climb. And, um, and I'm also very sad because all around me, I see all this cut timber. There are all these um, Chilgoza trees that have been cut down by the local people, the Sharani tribesmen, and this is in Job, also in Balochistan. And the local people didn't understand the value of these trees. And as you know, uh, Chilgozas are now black gold. Uh, they sell for thousands of rupees. If you try to buy Chilgozas in the local market, you know that you pay a thousand rupees for a tiny packet of Chilgozas. And many times you can't even find them because they're all being exported. So if you didn't know where Chilgozas came from, they come from this little cone that grows on the tree up on these mountains. And um, luckily, because the WWF Pakistan trained the local tribesmen on how to market the Chilgozas, they're now selling them for, um, and they're exporting them abroad, and they're valuing each and every tree now. This was another mountain that I climbed, but I did this happily. This is my favorite valley in Pakistan. It's called Palace Valley. It's up in Kohistan. Uh, so if you've ever gone on the Karakoram Highway, if you stop at a place called Patan and you look across the bridge, there's a valley and it's lost in clouds usually. And this is Palace Valley, internationally known as a biodiversity hotspot. This is home to the Western Tragopan a very rare form of species of uh, pheasant that was thought to be extinct. And they actually found some in this valley. And um, I loved visiting this place because of the moist temperate forests. They're pristine forests, but you have to, of course, climb quite high to see them. Unfortunately, this is also happening. So uh, I was really horrified to see this because these are deodar trees, and as you know, it takes about 100 years for a deodar tree to mature. And there were like piles and piles of these trees that had been cut down and they were lying on the KKH. And it's the outsiders who come, the timber mafia. They come and they buy these trees from the local community. This is a very impoverished district of Khaybar uh, Pakhtunkhwa, Kohistan district. And so the local people get nothing and, and the middlemen make all the money. The timber mafia makes the money and they sell these trees for a lot of money in Lahore and Karachi, Peshawar. So this is what happens when you have massive deforestation in your high mountains. This is Chitral district. And this is in 2015 and 2016, um, massive floods hit the district. And uh, because there are no, trees left in Chitral. I mean, all the forests have been cut down, the big, the, the big forest of Chitral. Uh, and the, the water comes in such a rush and it destroys your infrastructure, it washes away bridges, it washes away roads. 
And um, this was a valley that I visited uh, called Rambur Valley. It's a Kalash Valley. As you know, that there are about 4,000 Kalash left um, in Pakistan. They live in Chitral. And they live in three remote valleys of Bambura, Trimbir, and Birir. And this is these children I came across in Rambur. And this was just shortly after the floods had hit in 2016. And they look traumatized. And they're traumatized because the floods in Rambur lasted almost two weeks. And they were not just flash floods, they were also glacier lake outburst floods. So they bring down boulders, they bring down debris, and they devastated their homes, they lost their crops, they lost their orchards, and they lost their livestock. So it's not just the mountain communities that are at the forefront of climate change, it's also the coastal communities. And here we see degraded mangroves on the coast, and they're being uh, destroyed because of seawater intrusion. And this is on the Indus Delta. So the seawater is going into the Indus Delta because of climate change, certainly, but also because there's very little fresh water below the Kotri Barrage. And uh, it's not all doom and gloom. This was a project I visited in Katie Bandar. And as you can see, the green patches behind me, those are freshly grown mangroves. So WWF Pakistan had been planting mangrove saplings and they were actually flourishing. And you see the shrimp and the crabs and the fish, they live in the roots of the mangroves. So when the mangroves returned, the fishermen's livelihoods uh, picked up and they were really happy. And I wrote an article called Miracle at Katie Bandar. And um, I got an award because it was a story of hope. It shows how degraded landscapes can be restored. So further up the coast, uh, so I'm moving from the mountains to the mangroves, and here's the beach that I, I spoke of this earlier, the Green Turtle Beach, the Iran Beach. And this is on the border uh, with Iran, Jivani, and just one hour away is Gavadar. And of course, as you know, Gavadar is the gateway to the Middle East. Uh, this is the port that is being built by the Chinese, and all around this, a uh, huge city will come up, like Dubai, with skyscrapers. And uh, we need development, right? We're a poor country, we need development, we need to pull our people out of poverty. But it will come at a price, and I fear for this beach, this beautiful green turtle beach, what will happen to it? It's just one hour away. And uh, this is where it will all start. This is the Khunjara Pass, it's on the border with China. And uh, this is where CPEC will start. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor will start from Khunjarab and come all the way down to Gawadar. And this is me standing there. And I visited this pass in the 1990s. And there were glaciers on all the mountains. And now you can see that the glaciers have melted because of all the traffic, the vehicular emissions. And there's going to be a lot more as trucks and lorries come. And so development is important for Pakistan. But we don't want this, right? We don't want an ATM at 15,500 feet. Uh, it's just a gimmick, but this is a national park. It should be preserved. It should be protected. And I think that's my final message to you, that if we care deeply about something, we do learn to value it, to protect it, to care for it. And Pakistan is our home, and it's amazing natural heritage. It's our inheritance. And I think we can all, if we all try, we can all try to save it for our future generations. Thank you.